When the fears about the virus started to spread and the travel industry started to desperately slash their prices, my parents decided to let go of caution and grab the bargain. Their anniversary was coming up and they could never afford a cruise in a pandemic-free world. What's the worst that could happen? No one was going to keep 2,000 people in quarantine, right? Wrong. I was meant to have the house all to myself. This weekend was going to be my weekend. I would order pizza, park myself on the couch, and spend the entirety of the next 48 hours frying my brain to whatever binge-worthy show the algorithm would throw at me. No bickering, no chores, no orders. Just me, TV, and the family pet. I spent the whole week avoiding whatever bug was going around. My hands were raw from disinfectant. I was popping vitamins like Tic Tacs. There was at least a meter between all customers and classmates that I encountered. My caution game was on point. A perfect run. My throat felt fine. My lungs felt fine. I was the pinnacle of health. Then some assholes came in with a bag of cat litter and sneezed in my face. Sorry, he said absentmindedly as he wiped his dumb face on his hoodie. Working in a pet store has put me in regular contact with the section of population that owns spiders and lizards. I see scores of weirdos a week. This guy could take the Social Reject Olympics gold home all year round. He was a thumb of a man, hiding inside of a dirty hoodie. His eyes were vacant, his ingrown nose oozed, an expression of a moron floated on his face. I wanted to grab the straps of his hoodie and break his dumb skull on the counter, but with enough experience in customer service, you learn to choke back those impulses. I reached deep into my core for a smile. I wiped his mucus off my face. It's okay, just hope you don't have whatever bug is going around. <laughs> he gurgled in response. You could drown a small animal with the amount of phlegm that was in his throat. By card, please, he said as he extended his hand. His fingers looked dirty, pink. His credit card seemed monstrously big in their grasp. Stifling my need to scream, I rang him up and put his cat litter in a bag. His arms sunk below the counter under its weight. Have a great weekend, I yelled, knowing that my manager was watching. The man let out a soft gurgle as he slid out to the pet store. His bag dragged behind him. I took some deep breaths, calmed down enough to help lock up, grabbed some earthworms for Rancho, and went back home. Both of my parents believed that the best way to raise a stable child was to get it a pet. A pet would teach me compassion, responsibility, and would provide me with a much needed company children without siblings crave. I would have loved a dog, but my dad's allergy made that difficult. I would have to settle for a cat, but my mom was scared of the toxoplasma they spread. Instead, I got Rancho, the giant tortoise. Even though 17 is relatively young for a tortoise, Rancho moved with the authority of a dying dictator. Before he would enter a room, his heavy feet would announce his arrival. You could hear him deliberately stomp for attention before you could see him. Even if you had headphones in, you could sense something was off. The air would grow still, as if something horrible was about to happen. And then, just as you realized something was wrong, he would peek his cruel head in. His sagging neck seemed to extend forever. His reptilian eyes were always filled with hate. Rancho was mean. If you would touch him, he would peck you. If you were in his way, he would peck you. Hell, even if you looked at him for too long, he would start the slow journey to peck you. The only way you could get on Rancho's good side was with earthworms. When I arrived home from the pet store, Rancho greeted me in his usual fashion, a spine-chilling stare, followed by the snapping of his beak. The beast was hungry. As soon as I took out the bag of earthworms, he let out a sharp groan. Way. When I was a kid, my dad used the joke that Rancho's barks sounded like the word, why? He would call him the Philosopher Turtle. When Rancho bit his toe hard enough to cause permanent damage, he didn't talk much about Rancho after that. I poured the worms into Rancho's bowl. 
they wiggle cluelessly among the untouched leaves of kale and iceberg. Rancho would only eat greens out of hunger. He would eat flesh out of pleasure. It took him a couple of minutes to make his way to the bowl, but when his neck was close enough, he dove for the kill. As he crunched down on his prey, bits of still moving pink flesh fell around his bowl. He fed with such ferocity you could hear his breath stop between mouthfuls. Watching him eat was like watching a car crash compilation. The brutality made you sick, but you couldn't look away. I didn't want him in the house. My father didn't want him in the house. My mother had a superstitious reasons. It's my earliest childhood memory. Me, age three, in my crib, wearing my car's onesie, waking up in the middle of the night. Something was shaking my crib. That something was Rancho. He had his head pushed through the bars and was snapping at my face. We, we, we. I screamed. I wanted to cry for help, but something else came out of my mouth. That cruel, wrinkled face brought a single word out in my mind. A single word that I hollered at the top of my little pink lungs until my parents woke up. My mother had taken a Valium and my father had gotten drunk at the funeral. When they finally came to, they found their child curled up at the edge of his crib, screaming a single word. Grandpa! I faintly remember my father lifting me out of my crib and holding me for safety. But what I remember with complete clarity is my mother's response. Through tear-drenched eyes, I could see her standing there, staring at the turtle. She had buried her father earlier that day, and here was her son invoking his name at an animal. Daddy? She asked the tortoise. Way, way. She hugged Rancho. He immediately bit her. It didn't matter how much my father or me wanted the beast out of our house. She wasn't going to lose her father again. Rancho shoved his maw deep into his bowl. He huffed as he searched for leftover flesh that had dropped from his jowls. Rancho was still hungry. Ding! A text from Mom. Hi, honey. We're still waiting for more information from the captain. All this drama about the flu. So silly. I hope you're feeding Rancho. I fired back a, yeah, text. Ding! Mom. Make sure Rancho is enough water. Yeah. I'd hoped that my stomach was feeling funny because I'd watched Rancho snuff out a couple dozen lives. But even after he stomped his way into the living room, I still felt ill. The house was all mine. I could do whatever the hell I wanted to for the entirety of the weekend. All I needed to do was bolster my immune system. I chucked every fizzy vitamin tablet I could find into a glass, poured it over with water, and popped a couple of aspirins. Whatever sickness the guy in the pet store had could be sweated out. I climbed into bed and hoped to wake up healthy. I didn't. It was a fever dream. Even as I was in it, I knew it was a fever dream. I could feel my sweaty body wrestling beneath my covers. I knew I was in my bed. But I could feel something else too. Soil. Dirt. All around me. A taste of copper in my mouth. Pressure on my face. I was buried. I tried digging myself out, but I couldn't feel my limbs. It was as if they were all asleep. In a panic, I wiggled. I knew I was dreaming, but the earth felt so real against my face. I could feel the pressure loosening. I could feel the pressure loosening. I could feel myself wriggling out. A glint of sharp sunlight hit my face. I had made it. I had managed to wiggle out of my grave. Yet, my victory was short-lived. Within seconds, a man blotted out the sun. He was built like a bull, but carried a cane. His face was of old leather, each wrinkle telling a horrible tale. An old face which held back a bubbling anger. A Stalin who lived to be a hundred. Grandpa? I instinctively screamed as he plunged his cane into my body. 
he pushed down. I was buried once more. When I woke up, I still couldn't feel my arms. Throughout my nightmare, I had wrapped myself up in the blanket tightly enough to cut off all circulation. I shed my soaked bedding and desperately shook my arms around in the hope of getting back control. The first couple of seconds were scary. My arms simply flapped around like wet fish. But eventually, the blood flow returned. My weekend of freedom started out with me doing jazz hands for a good minute to make sure I could still feel my fingers. The taste of copper didn't fade. My sheets were soaked. Whatever I had come down with was something intense. I sat up on the edge of my bed, trying to get away from my sweaty imprint and survey the damage. My whole body felt weak. My throat was seized up. My head was in a vice. I was sick all right. Where? Rancho's head peeked into the room. His eyes met mine. He looked happy, like he was celebrating me being sick. Way. His bark sounded less like a why and more like a chuckle. He was excited and hungry. I woke up feeling sick and tired, but seeing that tortoise, seeing those hate-filled eyes, lit a flame in me. I wasn't going to let a little cold stop me from enjoying my weekend. Some sneezing asshole would not get to derail my lazy plans. I was going to spend the weekend enjoying junk food and watching television, flu or no flu. Even though I wasn't particularly hungry, I cracked my laptop and ordered a pizza. With enough tea and willpower, I could make myself healthy. Way, he grunted as he stomped away from my room. There was defiance in his bark, as if he knew that my plans would soon come crashing down. I was hoping that taking a shower would make me feel less feverish, but it did the exact opposite. Each droplet of water felt like a hailstone hitting my flesh. Fiddling with the warmth and water pressure did nothing. No matter how warm or gentle the stream was, it felt like I had gotten trapped in a storm. It wasn't until I got out of the shower that I noticed how much damage I had done. I was bruised. Wherever the water hit, I was covered in a torrent of blackening blemishes. As I stood myself in the mirror, I could see other signs of sickness. There were bags under my eyes. My whole body slumped with weakness. It was as if I hadn't used my arms for a month. In the time I brushed my teeth, my body was wet with perspiration again. As I groaned, I could feel phlegm gathering in the back of my throat. What? No tip? The pizza guy asked. I was going to apologize and explain to him that I didn't know when my parents were coming back, that I had to be careful with my spending cash. But before I managed to verbalize my thoughts, something else left my mouth. A sneeze. Sorry, I managed to mumble as I wiped my nose into my hoodie. The delivery guy's face went from anger to resigned defeat. It's okay. Hope you don't have whatever bug is going around, he mumbled. I wanted to apologize. I wanted to tell him that I also work in customer service and that I know what a bummer it is to interact with someone who doesn't cover their mouth. But the fever didn't allow that. The fever didn't permit empathy. All I managed to get out of me was a gargle. I wrapped myself up in a cocoon of blankets and occupied the couch. I had been looking forward to lazing around in front of the TV the whole week, but I couldn't focus on anything. The shows just became a flickering backdrop to my panic. My much desired pizza just became a foul smelling dish on the table. I started googling on my phone. My fingers felt weak but I kept on scrolling. Symptoms, transmission, prevention, predicted death tolls, quarantines, panic. With each minute that I spent on the web, I was more certain that whatever I caught from that sneeze was fatal. As my panic reached the crescendo, my attention was pulled away to something else. Way. Rancho stood by the couch, his yellow eyes burrowing into me. He snapped that hungry beak of his. 
way. There's kale in your bowl. Leave me alone, I yelled at him. As soon as I opened my mouth, a stream of thick spit left my lips. The tortoise defiantly snapped his beak and moved towards me. Rancho has always been imposing, but yelling at him would usually scare him off. Not this time. No, Rancho could sense that I was weak. He grabbed the foot of my blanket cocoon and tugged. The beast looked ancient, but there was hidden might in that neck. I tried to push Rancho away with my feet, but they were becoming numb again. Rancho just kept on snapping at the blanket. When I lost the will to fight him, he took the sweat-soaked bedding in his mouth and started to chew. His reptilian eyes were manic. It was as if he was gnawing on a bone before a feeding frenzy. I gave up on trying to fight Rancho over my covers. I slid out of my cocoon and left him to his chewing. Whatever damage he did was my mom's problem. If it was up to me, he would have been out of the house a decade ago. Making my way back to my room was more difficult than I'd anticipated. My legs felt heavy. Each step required forethought, and even then, I felt like I was about to lose balance at any second. When I finally reached the door, it seemed impossibly heavy. My fingers burned as I pulled the handle. I collapsed in my soaked bed and wrapped myself in the filthy blankets. Shudders went through my body. This was bad. This was really bad. Mom? I put the phone on loudspeaker and placed it on my heaving chest. Mom, are you there? I'm scared. There was music in the background. Some sort of mariachi band. Honey, what's wrong? Are you okay? Is Rancho okay? Rancho's fine. He's chewing on... Look, Mom, I think I'm sick. I tilted my head forward. The phlegm was gathering in my throat. I think I have whatever they're talking about on the news. A guy sneezed in my face on Friday and... Nonsense, it's just the flu. You're being paranoid because you're watching the news. She replied in the same tone she used to assure me that there is no boogeyman when I was a kid. It was the same tone she used when my father suggested Rancho might not be the best companion for a child. But what if I'm really sick? What if I'm really, really sick? What if I'm going to die? She laughed. No one is going to die, honey. Mom, this is serious. I gargled. She took a deep breath. Honey, you just have the flu and a colorful sense of imagination. Even if you do have this big scary virus that everyone is talking about, you're young, you'll be fine. Maybe you'll have to spend a couple days in bed, but you'll be fine. It's older folks like me and your dad that should be worried. Do you see us worrying? No, we're not worried. In fact, no one is worried. Turns out everyone on the boat is healthy. This whole quarantine business was just some dumb people thinking they were being extra careful. Me and your dad will be home on Sunday. I took her words in. Her mention of my youth made my achy body feel a bit better. The panic subsided. Sure, I was sick. But suddenly, it didn't feel so fatal. You'll be back on Sunday? I finally asked. We'll be back on Sunday, so you better clean up. She paused. I could faintly make out my father's voice on the phone, but the words weren't clear. Dad is saying that if you're feeling really sick, you should call a doctor. Are you feeling really sick, or can you wait till tomorrow? I can wait till tomorrow, I said without thinking too hard. Good, just make sure you get plenty of rest. Don't strain yourself. She paused for a second, as if she remembered something immensely important. Does Rancho have fresh water? Did you bring him any worms from work? Yes, Mom, I said, closing my eyes. She talked for a bit, but I drifted off. I needed the rest. I was back underground, but this time, it didn't feel like a dream. As I burrowed through the earth, it felt as if my entire human life was a prelude to something else, as if my childhood, my friends, my job, 
my parents were all some sort of mirage that was meant to distract me from my true purpose. As I slithered on, I could feel pebbles and roots rub against my impossibly long body. It felt good to slither. It felt good to be doing what I was meant to be doing. My arms and legs didn't feel like they were missing. It felt as if they were never there to begin with. I crawled on in a strange sort of peace, but then the ground started to shake. Stumps. Loud stumps that made it difficult to move forward. I tried to burrow deeper underground to escape it all, but the stomping simply grew stronger. The sound was deafening. The earth shook with each one, but there was something else that I heard. Faintly. Ever so faintly in the distance. Way, way, way. My pillow was covered in hair. My hair. I touched my head in horror, only to reveal a moist, smooth scalp. I froze, hoping that I was still in some weird fever dream. But as I tried to pinch my newly bald head, I realized something else. My hands. There was something wrong with my hands. Wiry fingers connected to sticks for arms. It was as if someone had sucked all the strength out of my arms and left behind a faint memory of bone. They felt so impossibly fragile. Way, I heard from my feet. It was Rancho. His eyes were mad with hunger. He was shoving his beastly head into the covers, fishing for something. I tried to kick him back, but my legs were asleep. I could feel his beak nestling up against my toes. And then... An indescribable wave of pain shot through my body. Memories of videos from health class warning us about the dangers of lifting weights and sandals exploded in my mind. It was just like the pain that the funny-footed athletes described, but so, so much worse. Way. Way. Ranger pulled his head from beneath the covers. His beak was covered in blood, an unrecognizable color of pink in his mouth. Way. He grunted again as he launched his head back under the covers. I could feel his cold beak against my flesh, but I tucked my knees in the last moment and avoided him. I pushed myself away from the monster and slid out of the covers like a lubricated hot dog. I stared at my lower body in horror. I had no legs. My legs had disappeared beneath a long, segmented layer of skin. A human toe peeked out from beneath the foreign flesh. The bruises that covered my body after the shower had turned a dark red. Upon seeing the full monstrosity of my body, I screamed, but only bubbles of mucus escaped my throat. Way, way, Rancho wheezed as he climbed on top of the bed. A mad hunger played in his eyes, as if he had been starved for centuries and was about to get his first meal. I kept on pulling back, covering the already wet bed with a thick helping of blood. Way, way, he approached, his heavy body sinking into my mattress. Each stomp carried a wet echo. Rancho walked through puddles of my sweat and blood, his reptilian eyes screaming murder. I curled up on the edge of my bed, but he showed no signs of stopping. He just kept on coming, chomping with that sharp beak of his. I tried to calm my breath, but seeing my own blood, seeing my hair fall out, seeing that shelled beast was simply too much to handle. Shelled. My mind grabbed a hold of that word. Rancho was a lethargic lizard in a shell. I gathered my breath. I tried my best to calm down and bide my time. I waited until the spritzes of blood from my wound were hitting his face. And then, I kicked him. My kick didn't push him far, but it pushed him far enough. Rancho hit the floor with a thud. He was square on his shell. Where? He growled as his neck spun around, searching for the angle to lift himself up at. His muscles bulged as he smashed his head against the ground to regain footing. His neck started to look more like a bicep. The bicep of an arm that wanted to kill me. I didn't have much time. 
I grabbed my phone with my new bony appendages and dragged myself by Rancho. As I moved past him, he snapped at me. Luckily enough, the thick layer of sweat that covered my body served as a lubricant. I slid my way out of the room and onto the living room carpet. Even though it felt foreign, I used my newfound tail to slam the door behind me. As soon as I hit the carpet, my strength started to run out. I was no longer sliding myself across the floor. Now, I was dragging a heavy worm body with arms that audibly creaked with each pull. I pulled myself as far away from my room as I could, and then collapsed. I tried calling my parents, but they're not picking up their phone. I tried calling emergency services, but the lines are too full of people freaking out about the dumb flu that's on the news. I don't know what to do. I need help. Over the course of searching of ways to help, my fingers have progressively lost all of their feeling. They've withered even further, and I fear they will soon fall off, and I will just be a worm. Where I stopped, I thought I was safe. I thought Rancho would be trapped behind my bedroom door. But I was wrong. So wrong. I can hear him behind the door. His incessant way, way, ways are making my blood cold. He has gotten up on his hind legs and is smashing the door with his thick skull. The door isn't strong and Rancho isn't weak. There's cracks in the wooding. Soon, he'll be out. As I lay here, a man turned worm, with my fingers slowly turning to dust. I can only ask myself one question. Why didn't that asshole cover his mouth? <laughs>